I suck at jujitsu. How do I suck to less? I guess to suck less. Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to the newest episode of the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. So today I have a really special one for you guys, and this is something that we really have only hinted at a little bit on the podcast, and I'm finally going to give you some information about it, and so I'm so excited uh, to share today's episode with you. Uh, And it's also an interview with a guest that is one of the most requested to come back guests that we've ever had on the show. And it's because he's my dad. You know, it produces really cool conversation when um, I get to sit down with someone who's really close to me. I get to sit down with somebody who is, uh, who has been a training partner for the whole time I've done jujitsu. And for me, my dad has been that closest training partner the entire time I've done jujitsu. And it's really, uh, it's really fun to get to just to just talk about kind of some of the old days of training when I was young and he was still considered in the gym the old guy, um, but just how we both made it through those phases and um, some really big things that have helped us along the way. And um, one of the big things, and we don't talk about it a whole lot, is strength training. Um, we talk about efficiency in our training in jujitsu all the time, uh, but we really believe in efficiency in everything. And so um, we're going to reveal to you guys this crazy, I don't know, this crazy protocol that we've used for years. And um, I think people are going to really like it for their um, for their strength training, for their strength gain, strength gain, and just defining what exercise is, what its purpose is. I really think you guys are going to love this episode. Uh, there's just so many things to take out of it. Uh, that being said, I just wanted to make sure you guys know, I'll tell you guys about it on a commercial, but we also are, uh, we're announcing uh, the newest course on simplifyingjujitsu.com today. And that is the course that goes along with this episode and it is called efficient strength for bjj in 15 minutes no no, efficient bjj strength in 15 minutes that's what it's called uh and i'll give you all the information on how to get that uh but basically obviously as the title suggests it is 15 minute workout one to two times per week and uh it can give you these incredible strength gains without damaging your joints and uh, yeah, without beating you up. And so you'll get more information. Uh, but I really think even if you guys give no care about strength, strength training, you will always enjoy a conversation between my dad and I when it comes to jujitsu things. And uh, that's what this is. And so without further ado, let's get into the episode. And they trained that whole group like that. Bryce, are we recording? All right. Are we good? Are we good to go? Yeah, I'm good. Is this your phone or mine? Yours, it's mine. Come on, Bryce. I'm gonna just be be spitting facts today, Josh. I like it. I like it. All right. So. Josh, it's been like a month since I've done this. I'm just pressing record on the small. On the small thing, and so when it turns red, we're good. As long as there's a, there should be a countdown feedback on your, all right. Uh, and as long as that mic bar is jumping up and down, we have sound. Heck yeah. All right. So Steve McKinney, how are you doing today? Great. How, how is the morning going? Busy. I yeah. woke up early, got a ton of stuff done. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Woke up and uh, had a lot of prep work to do for tomorrow and then I also recorded a video for my HIT, I'm my uh, on my training group, um, because in the fall and we're approaching that people are not as motivated. So I told them, "Hey, got to kick it into gear, man. It's time to reset some goals." What uh, what tactic do you use to uh, to get these people motivated? Do you hit them with the fear? Do you hit oh, them no, with no, the, no. the pecan pie and you're going to die? No, you no. know, uh, mine's just more positive, but always positive approach. Like, you know, like, um, obviously <clears throat> in a situation like that, what you see is people, they'll come into the summer like, oh man, it's summer. I'm going to be going here and there. I'm going to be in shape. And then when the fall, when the summer kind of wanes, then they kind of go back to, 
you know, bad habits. So you have to kind of motivate them. And, you know, one of the things I was training a client online the other day and I was explaining, uh, I got this from a guy named, I think it is HIT Health, I think it is. It was really good. He got it. He runs the Myo Science supplement company, but he said there are 56 benefits from lifting weights, 56 benefits. So I always tell people, hey, I'm giving you a pill. Mm hmm that's going to create 56 benefits in your life. It releases these things called myokines. Myokines are these little protein things that communicate with your brain and your liver and your pancreas. Training properly increases your health alone. And so what I'd say is, hey, just do something. So set a goal. Maybe it's just make sure you hit your workouts, take a walk every day. You know, So I just make it positive. And I could always go, hey, you know, Pecan pie and you're going to die. I like that. That's a good one, right? That just was right off the top of my head. Um, But yeah, I, I think that that is interesting because that's really what the business that you've been in forever of personal training, you really, your job is to cultivate the habit as much as you can for people throughout the year. Because if somebody just stays in and just keeps training. You have some clients that have trained for 30 years, you know? It's crazy. And so, and just somebody hits that one time, they build that habit, you know, they, it really makes a huge difference. I, I, a couple of quick stories from yesterday. I was Uh training uh, Terry Cook. Terry Uh Cook comes in, just a, just a good guy. Uh He's just a good guy. He is strong as an ox. (laughs) I'm telling you, that guy can move some weight. He is a big, strong man. Uh Uh-huh. And then Mike Reed. Mike Reed comes in, and um, and I trained him for four weeks now. He has a really bad neck uh, injury and so, shoulder injury, so I showed him some little tips. And we have that in, like what I did with Josh Stevens. Yeah. Um, so I showed him how to kind of correct those things. Um, it's not a hundred percent corrected, but it's better. You know, he comes in, he's like, "Man, I want to just give you a hug." I'm like, "No, we ain't doing that." Yeah. Um, but he says, uh, "My you can shoulder, come train, you yeah, can come to jujitsu." <laughs> yeah, he, he says, "My shoulder feels better." So um, anyway, he came in yesterday. I'm looking at him. I'm like, "Mike, do you notice? Like, you have this is your fourth training session with me." Uh-huh. And I'm like, "He goes, I know." He goes, I was telling Sarah, he always tells me, I was telling Sarah, Pastor Steve got, he put some muscle on me. And I'm like going, oh man, that's uh, that's really cool. But it's noticeable. And I told him, I go, the, the big reason for that is, is you're not overtraining. Yeah. That's the, you're allowing your body to recover, which is a, you know, a big factor. But back to what you were saying, um, I have had clients that have been with me forever and um, you know, the way that we approach training, it's intellectual, it's not emotional. And so it's a totally different, um, it's a totally different way. It's, um, I think there's a difference between actual exercise and recreation. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so recreation could be, you know, anything that doesn't train people the way I say you should train people. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't mean uh-huh. that in a negative way, but I think there's just a, a definition of exercise. And we... Um, we use that definition in the, uh, um, I just wrote that for us to, to yeah. the product that we're putting on uh-huh. and what that definition is and what it looks like. And just like anything, just like to me, the <clears throat> definition of jujitsu, you redefine it constantly and you redefine it constantly just to make it simpler and easier point. to understand, you know? Um, and I really feel like with, with this, and we'll get more into the, you know, what we've been doing strength and conditioning wise. Um, but I just thought it would be interesting because there was, there, are, there are clients you've been, you've had for 30 plus years, 25 for you. Yeah, you exactly. Trained you since you were five years old, uh-huh. man. And um, we started off in, you know, you literally grew up in the gym. I mm-hmm. have a little swing when I'm training clients. I'm trying to get this business off the ground. I would swing you to where you would sleep. <laughs> then I'd train a client. Then you start to wake up. I'm like, swing this kid again. <laughs> I, re- I remember. And when people think of a swing in the gym, they're probably like, oh, yeah, you know, like a, like a crib, like a baby swing. It's like, no, nah, we had two ropes tied to two what what are those called are they eye Eye hooks eye hooks yeah uh two eye hooks in the ceiling i'm assuming connected to a stud i could have been swinging from drywall for all i knew for me yeah you know i can't fix anything yeah and so there's a big possibility uncle jack probably put that swing up for me uh, yeah it didn't fall so someone else beside me put it yeah yeah Yeah. and so uh but yeah i remember getting just launched into the ceiling you know on a on a 10 foot ceiling, on a 10 foot swing in the middle of the gym with all kinds of, 
you know, yeah. steel equipment around me. Uh, but is there anything in that time that you've observed from some of the clients that have stayed consistent for so long that you noticed that they did that helped them stay consistent oh, or anything like that or anything like? Yeah. 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 It's just, so one comes to mind and I, one of the original books, um, that I, that I wrote, um, was fitness and more. I just put everything into this book. And I remember that it was 586 pages. Man, I remember being a little kid and you spending all kinds of time. You just always being like, I got to work on my book. When you're a kid, everything's new to you. So you don't realize, okay, dads aren't usually working on their book. Right. Uh, and I, I just remember that little bits of that as a kid. And the first time that I, or the second time I wrote an ebook, the first time it was really quick and I had to get it done. The second time I spent months and months and months on it and, um, and, and years on the content of it. And it was so, I remember just having little flashbacks of being frustrated writing this ebook and then being like, I remember my dad working all morning and then getting off so he could write in his notebook and work on his book and uh, just thinking like, Oh wow, that's you know things you just you see those things and a lot of times you just eventually whatever find yourself doing them. You yeah, know? and I remember years ago with someone just I ever read someone said, "Hey, if you want to write a book, make it a, write a page a day." Mm -hmm. So I just disciplined myself to like to at least write a page a day. Mm -hmm. And so going back, um, I had before and after pictures. I learned that from Ellington Darden. Um, he said, always have before and after pictures are really important. Make them legit. Mm -hmm. You know, don't make them up like you see people doing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, and then, uh, um, but uh, Burge, Steve Burge, uh -huh. and he's been with me forever and a uh -huh. day. And I have his original, I have his original picture and his original transformation. And he came in, uh, he, he trains with me. I see him every Monday morning at 7 a.m., um, and one day he came in and I'm like, Steve, look at that belt. And he shows me his belt and he's got like eight inches of where his weight used to be. Uh huh. And, um, and I took a picture of that. I'm like, Steve, you've been with me forever. Yeah. And he has, um, his, you know, he's gotten older, obviously. Um, he played a lot of ball, so his joints are a little wacky, but he's still in the game and he created the habit of doing exactly what I said. He only trains with me once a week. Um, he walks daily and he watches his diet. It's, you know, it's, it's simple. It's not flashy, but it works. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. King, been training with him for years. He's, he is like, uh, always sends clients to me and he's been in the game forever. And uh, he had a surgery recently and he would text me like, man, I miss the gym. You know, so yeah, you create these habits for people and um, they become successful over the years. So, do you notice certain habits that people like the opposite question that people will fall off? The people that you'll go, okay, this guy's not going to last, or this person's not going to last. Anything oh, that they say gosh. or anything that they they think or want to do. Yeah. So what you'll see in those situations, they're people who don't own it. They don't take ownership of their health. It's always, there's just a ton of excuses. Um, and so um, you'll just see those things. Well, you know, um, I just couldn't make it in. Or I'm like, no, you you have to make, this is your priority. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a, um, a pill that's going to create a lot of great um, responses for you. But um, if you can't take the pill, I can't help you. And so you, and I think a lot of that has to do with perceived uh, um, value of what you're giving people. Um, and they don't understand the value. So I don't sell fitness at all. Mm -hmm. I don't. When a new client comes in, I don't sell them on anything. All I do is tell them the truth. This is what's going to happen. This is how you, this, you know, I'll help you set your goals. This is how you reach your goals but you have to own this. I can give you a diet, but it won't work forever. You have to learn how to create a lifestyle for yourself. I can guide you along the way and we have to make it fit you. And then you have to be adaptable because not one thing lasts forever. So you have to be able to adapt in the middle of that. But when you see people making excuses and another thing is like <clears throat> changing workout times, 
oh, I can't make it in at this time. Can I do this time? I can't make it in. Like, oh, you're on the way out. Yep. You know, there's only so much of that that I, I I'm busy. I don't have, I'm here to help, but I can't, I can't do that, uh-huh. you know? So, so those are the things I, I kind of see. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I guess, I guess a lot of that, cause I always, you know, look at all these things related to jujitsu and, and one of the biggest things in jujitsu really is building habits. You just cannot argue. We did not have the potential to be as good as we are now seven years ago, even though we had eight years of jujitsu training, we just <clears throat> didn't have the potential no matter how many extra training sessions we did, how many extra instructionals we watched. We did not have that potential knowing that you and I were both very dedicated to getting good at jujitsu. Um, and it was simply that we hadn't been in the habit long enough. And now you get to this point of just, you know, nothing's really changed. Of course, we have new ways of training, new ways of teaching, new ways of doing all these things, but we're still there every day, right? And so no matter no matter what all these new things, all these fancy things, all these things that are going to help you lose 60 pounds in six weeks, they don't really matter because six weeks is still going to be a moment from now. And then you still have 60 years to, to keep all that weight off. And so with jujitsu, it's the exact same thing. You can train as hard and especially like for a competition, as hard as you want. But the truth is, if you're not compounding with just showing up and having that habit built, it just doesn't seem to matter. It just doesn't seem those guys, even the guys with the most potential, if they don't keep it as a habit and they don't, even if the habit isn't every single day, even if it's once a week, they don't keep it as a habit. They just, you know, you fall off for six months and those six months, there was so much more you could have been doing in that time. And you could have stayed in shape in those six months. And I noticed those kind of same things, obviously being a personal trainer for a long time. Uh, I noticed those, noticed those same things when I was doing it is there were people that wanted to fix it quick, to fix it quick. And then there were people that understood that it was just part of the lifestyle to enjoy the rest of the things that they wanted to. Uh, Yes, absolutely. And you look at like the evolution of what you just said. And what I mean by that is we started jujitsu. We're training in this particular fashion. We're doing some, um, we're doing private lessons and trying to figure out, you know, how to get better and what have you. And <clears throat> and then what happens to us as as leaders in that or our, our coaches in that, your game evolves to teach better. <laughs> and it's the same thing with like when I train clients, like the way I train and the things we're going to be talking about today, <clears throat> they're a product of years of trial and error. When you know that you have a um, a viable logical um, process with the way that we train that that you know over the years we train clients, you have to still make nuances and and make it better. And that's kind of the the same thing. But you were laughing. What were you thinking? I totally agree with that. But I just I was more wondering um, why we think that. Why we think what? Why you and I think that that you. Because that's not that's not common thinking. What you just said, as you said it, matter of fact, which I agree with. You know, we you should always be. You have this great idea; it could be tweaked. It could always be a little better, well, and you could always no, be I... pushing it forward. And that isn't common thinking, especially in jujitsu. You have a technique, you put it in a system, mm-hmm. you sell that system as a system of moves, and then you go teach seminars like you're a band, and it is the that's your set. And I play one set because this is what I'm famous for. You know, and you see that. I see that in jiu-jitsu because I get to, it seems like seminars are side by side a lot now. And so I get to learn from guys without ever having to like, actually go, I'm teaching at the seminar too, but you get to learn from guys. And that's what I notice is some guys kind of paint themselves into this box of these are the techniques that I do. And I taught them five years ago. And so I have to keep teaching them the same. Okay. A couple of thoughts on that. The yeah. first thing is this. I think why we do it is because we're, I, I, I'm a learner. I'm trying to learn. And there's things I, I don't, like, I know what I know, and I know a lot of it is true. Yeah, I'm like, this is fact, but what can we, what can I learn? How can I make this better? How can I make this product better? And and so, and not to be critical of anyone else, when you're talking about the jujitsu thing, it's the same principle. You, you, you have this set of techniques, but from what, 
I've learned from you in jujitsu is those techniques go into concepts. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn the technique first before you can get to the concept. Now, the thing about that too, though, is some people stop at the technique. It's like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he, he sang the song, I'll Be. And it's a country guy, uh, McCain or Mc, I don't I don't remember, but here's what he said. Somebody asked him, this was his like his greatest song. And they ask him, they go, hey, you ever get tired of singing this song? And he goes, no way. He said, listen, he says, this is the one song that kept me from being a pizza delivery guy. How can I be mad about that? Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with the technique part of it, mm -hmm. but then he's got other songs. Of course. And so does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That, so that makes perfect sense. <clears throat> uh, so in that mindset, is there any thought on 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 that mindset on how to, to cultivate having that learner mindset, just being willing to say, you, I know this and I know that it's right but maybe I don't know it fully. Cause that's what you have to be asking yourself. Cause if you're right, why not just stop there? You get what I mean? Oh, totally. Um, yes. And so, um, I remember one guy said, you think that you're right about everything you do in training? And I said, yeah. And if I thought I was wrong, I'd change. Yeah. And so, um, and I think you made a good point. I of can course. be, you know, pretty like, oh, this is the way to do it. Yeah. But I'm glad that doesn't run in my family. <laughs> right, Bryce? <laughs> the The thought that I have is this. Um, when you think you know it all and you stop, you're, you're never going to learn. Uh -huh. And so, I, and I'll, I'll give you a harsh reality in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. um, it may be not a harsh reality, but things that I notice. Um, and I try to um, speak into this when I'm teaching a class. I tell people, I'm like, look, here's what I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach you a mount escape. Now, some of you higher level belts may think that you don't need this, um, but you do. Mm -hmm. You may not, you may not um, get mounted here in the gym because maybe you're higher level belt. You're better than you know a lot of other people. But there's going to be some time you go to another gym, you go to a tournament, and you're going to get mounted. And if you don't listen to this right now. You're not gonna. You're not gonna have a clue on how to escape from that. And you with me on that? Yeah. And so, uh, so I think that there's a level of arrogance that we can all fall into to think, hey, I know this. I don't need anybody else. This little fly is gonna die in a moment. You know, I uh, there. I think that this fly has been on the podcast more than any other guest, and I think it's the <laughs> same one. And we've never gotten him. Uh, I tell you why. He's got that revived coffee in him, Dude, man. It keeps you alive. It, it turns you every morning. I'll I'll drink my revived coffee. Upstart. I'll I'll drink it by upstart roasted by upshot. By Upshot Coffee. Oh, um, Upshot. I'm yeah. sorry. I can't. I don't have a glass on, um, so I can't but, see. But you know, so I'll drink like lot number one thirty six, and then I look at it and I set it on this pedestal, and I pray, <laughs> make me a super soldier, <laughs> turn me into a super soldier. And I think that fly di he dips into that. Oh, and lives yeah. forever. Oh, so yeah. I think there's he's, something to he that. He wasn't. He wasn't a horse fly until he yeah. until he got in here, and now he's a horse yeah, fly. I got it. So. But anyway, I don't know. We got <laughs> sidetracked by the fly, but <laughs> um, so yeah, go ahead. I I just think you know I just think um, for that I just I just kind of wanted to to pick your brain on those topics. I thought they're interesting because um, I just noticed that that's a habit that you have uh, all the time is is always trying to learn more, even in and again not a habit from a lot of pastors, right? And it's same thing. I just noticed in, in, you know, you being a pastor, how long have you been a pastor for? Way too long for sure. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's a hard job. People have no idea how hard of a job that is. It's of course. Job, of course. Um, I, it, it's basically what my job is, except you're not allowed to beat up people that you disagree with, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, and then make an example of them in front of the whole congregation. Like, imagine if you could treat, imagine if you could treat something at the church like I treat people at jujitsu sometimes when somebody won't pay attention to mount escapes. And so I'll just mount them. I'll just be <laughs> like, okay, lay down. You teach mount escapes then. Let's see you get out of mount. 
how how great would it be if you put old lady Kronyats at the <laughs> church who's been complaining, who's been writing comments like, I don't like that Steve wears T-shirts sometimes, and you got to just like hit her with a cross collar choke. I man, <laughs> I, I I I'm not. I just I leave all that alone, man. It's all good. But now, I have a great great group of people, and it's it's a hard job. Is a good job. I, I just. Yeah, of course, but um, it, it is a challenge at times, though, for sure. And and yes, those thoughts go through my mind. I just don't. I just don't verbalize those. Of course, so. and I think that I think though that it's interesting just to be again that willingness to go. Well, what if I'm wrong? What should yeah. I? You know, I should really. And you, Josh, have to make you know in you know you kind of understand this in business and stuff like that, and you have to make tough decisions. Yes, and those are not popular. Yes. And, but you got to look at the greater good for what's going on, and man, you'll get roasted for some of that stuff. But it's part of the part of the process of business and life, and 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 that's I think you know I I like to surround myself with people who are wise who've been with stuff before. I have a good group of people that I can you know reach out to, and I've been doing that for a while, and so I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Something I never thought of. So I mm-hmm. keep myself in that loop of of uh, you know being under some what if an authority Mm -hmm. in the middle of that? So, you know, you and I bounce things off of each other and how we should run the gym. What's the best way to go about this? And so, and we also defer to Kyle on a lot of things and, and defer to still, uh, to this. And that's not some blind loyalty thing. It's a leadership thing. It is. It is. Uh, and it's like, well, if I want my students to respect my authority and I don't respect my coach's authority, then I don't have, you know, what, why would my students respect me? I agree. You know, they, I teach them to go, okay, so we don't, we don't listen to anything. This guy, now we know more than this guy. He doesn't know anything. Yeah. When right? I go to revive and um, training with Nick or junior or someone like that, I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm like, Hey, you know, what do you, you know, um, how do you guys run this or whatever? You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm in there as a student. I don't even think twice about any of that when I, you know, when I need Watson, just call him and, you know, um, we talk all the time. So, And you'll notice that habit in the best guys, Junior, Nick, Kyle, will go on whatever day we're training and everyone's beat up and we'll talk about one position for an hour and we'll all throw out different ideas and because somebody's having a problem and it's usually us mm-hmm. causing the problem. Hey, uh, you do this Junior and Nick do this to respond to this guard that we've been playing what should we do? And then we'll even kind of argue about it and be like, no, 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 that wouldn't work because Josh does this when you try that. And so it's just this, uh, you know, and it really, sometimes it lets you get these huge breakthroughs in an hour, but there is to me again, like a lot of places don't do that. A lot of, a lot of higher level guys are afraid to do that. Um, because they think of it as like, it's showing weakness. Like I don't know everything, but the truth is, you don't know everything so and true. I could probably beat you up and I'm a nobody from Granite City mm-hmm. and like, and you're trying to act like you've got the secrets. And so, and if I can't, there's a nobody from somewhere else it that can. can. Yeah. And so that had a different mindset and didn't say that got to learn from enough perspectives and say, Oh, maybe, maybe all these guys are right, but a little, you yeah, know? Yeah. I teach, um, we teach a lot of fundamentals with, uh, Coach, Coach Rob, bi- Bionic BJJ guy. Bionic but BJJ. But I'll always ask Rob, hey, Rob, what do you do here? And what do you do to get those grips that are iron? Or, or even uh, uh, Rosencutter, um, the other day we were in class, and I'm like, man, you do this with your mount escapes. Show us uh-huh. what you do with yeah. your legs. His leg pummeling is really, really, really good. I can always tell when people come visit from other gyms, and especially Color Belt, and they come to my class, and they're like, oh, man, I can't wait to learn from Josh. And I say six sentences, and then I make Robert teach a move that he didn't expect to teach, and then I make somebody live defend it, and then I make everybody start to play designated winner. And I can tell they're just like, wait, you didn't did know. we learn something? Oh, we did, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it's not its not what I normally would learn. And you just can see that, like, those funny facial expressions of, like, what's going on? Is this a cult? Am I – what's what's happening here? And it's just – it's a different mentality of – Robert knows closed guard better than I do. Robert has spent thousands of hours. I've cultivated my being able to play top in closed guard by helping him get better at his bottom by being on top, you know? Beauty of him, though, is he is humble. Oh, yeah. 
And, and I love it when he's in class because mm-hmm. if I'll teach something, I'll look over and he'll be like, Oh, and yeah, he'll, the facial expressions. And he'll just crush one of the blue belts with it later on and be like, Coach, talk, look at this. Talk trash. You know, he oh, does. yeah. He'll have Colin and a full Nelson. He'll be like, You like this, Coach? <laughs> like, Yeah, I do, man. I, lo- I love it. Keep doing that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I think, you know, just continuing to learn is, is really, really important in the middle of it. So, kind of talked about some big ideas. And I really think a lot of these ideas will relate to what we're really on the show to talk about more, and that is strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. And we've done some longevity type things, um, but we have not just done a generalized, and we will be be humble and say, you know, we have a thing that really works good for 40 plus guys, right? And Mm -hmm. we do, okay? But we also are niching a little bit. The truth is this works really well for for athletes and it works really well for grapplers. And I thought an interesting place to start to talk about this, this, you know, what we're going to talk about, um, is, do you remember when we first started training jujitsu and it was all new and we're at the hit squad and this is a mega gym, the first mega MMA gym that there was. And it's in Granite City, Illinois, of all places. Uh, our coach to this day, Kyle, is our jujitsu coach there. And we get to um, just kind of start to get in with the crowd. You know, I'm getting better at jujitsu. We lift every Saturday. And I think some guys start to notice a little and start to go, okay, well, I want to jump in on this. Or some guys, you start to train a few guys. And it got to this point where you were doing a lot of different training sessions with all kinds of different MMA athletes. And that was, we even created a product. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called weight training for MMA, weight training for MMA. And mm-hmm. it was the first one we did. You look at how far we've come releasing this product. One, we've been doing this stuff forever. I mean, that was at Blue Belt. That was 15 years ago, 14 years ago. Uh, and then you look at like, you know, where we've come now, but mm-hmm. I just wanted to start out from your perspective you're 25 years into being a personal trainer, HIT training. You uh, played sports at a high level, and now your son is finally getting into something. You're starting to get to train some. I mean, UFC caliber guys. You know, there are guys that fought it, fight in the UFC still that you were training, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, and fight on slap boxing and bare knuckle boxing and. That was really what the hit squad cultivated was a lot of tough guys who could train hard and could fight. And they know? just wanted to fight. They just wanted to fight. Um, but you just like in that time, you just what did that that specific time look like? What did your program kind of look like? It, it, was it different than it is now? It, it was. The principles were the same. Yeah. And the number one principle is intensity. How hard you work. You you know the only thing you can measure with intensity. Um, is zero or a hundred. <laughs> Everything else is guesswork. Does, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's like, you, when you train as hard as you can possibly train in a safe and controlled fashion, you train to muscular failure, that's a hundred percent intensity. So back then it was, so I didn't track the speed of movement um, um, as well as I should have, but there's a learning process with that. Um, and then probably a little too much volume because you have to look at, um, and but people got results, don't get me wrong, but you have to adjust those factors. And and so that's where it started. Um, and there was a ton, like I did, I trained a lot of people and people got, re- there was like some crazy strength with that whole process. The um, the other factors are, are, but they were training too often, not with me, but just with all the stuff that they did. Yeah, they were training twice every single day with no breaks, and they also they didn't they didn't most of them did not work or anything. So you do you can get away you with can that get away for with a that. period That's of time. That's a great point, you know. And uh, you know there are people who really are pretty optimized with stuff. A lot of times, that type of training you tend to need to be on something to train hard for two days, but it's not. Twi- or twice a day, but it's not a prerequis- re- prerequisite. There are definitely guys that can do it without. But if you think about over time, um, how bodies break down from yep. that, and that's so. With what we do now, what what I've learned over the years is, man, we've cut our training back a lot. 
but our intensity is a, a little different. It's still high. But one thing that we've done differently is um, time under load. Oh, yeah. That is one of the things that we have done differently. And so I, I'll explain kind of, of why we do that and how it works muscularly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and this, I explained it even further um, in the product that we just put out. But muscularly, here's what happens. You have four different types of, of, of muscle fibers. It's called efficient BGJ strength in 15 minutes because we both kept calling it the product because we couldn't remember the name. Okay. Um, but efficient BGJ strength in 15 minutes. Okay. So which is also people like, oh, you crazy. That never works, but whatever. Um, yeah, let's, let's just put it into context so we can explain what we are. Okay. The, the big point. The big point is that myself and quite a few different athletes from our team um, and just a ton of athletes over the years, but really a, a group that's been really consistent is getting like crazy results over 18 months, two years, and they just keep adding and adding. And they're very slow, but they keep adding and compounding. And we all work out once a week for 15 minutes a lot of times, twelve and a half minutes is usually about the is usually about it, the time. If you're in off season, we can add a second workout, but that's based on individual recovery time. Mm -hmm. It's not based on a, a like um, this is the only thing we you know. But how we so anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I'm then gonna, I just want to make sure. So one 15 minute workout a week, and then explain all the other strength conditioning stuff that we're doing outside of that one workout. Yeah, no, nothing. So basically, but we do the one workout, but we do add a little bit of a sprint. The only ballistic movement we do, and that's just something that I wanted to do, and I got it from a guy named Tom Kelso, mm -hmm. um, and he's, he, I think he was a, a NFL football coach, uh, strength and conditioning coach or assistant for a while, but he just added to sprints, and he said that's the only ballistic thing he does, and it creates some level of athleticism, but that's secondary to the product. Makes but, sense. So the idea of what we do is, is, is strength training. We train a muscular failure and we give people what I call a dose of exercise. Mm -hmm. And we want that dose of exercise to elicit a response. What are, what response are we looking for? We're looking for someone to get stronger. Um, that's the initial response to that. That's our initial goal to make people stronger. Now, some people can add muscle with that. Um, if you're going up a weight class or something, you have to be careful of that, but you can add muscle with it as well. So I call it dose response relationship to exercise. I learned it from Dr. Doug McGuff. And so I quote him a lot. He's a pretty sharp guy. Um, so, um, you give people, it's like administering medicine. The dose of exercise that I give people is like medicine. It's like you get an antibiotic. So the doctor will give you an antibiotic, but he's looking for a response from that antibiotic. And so if he gets the response he's looking for, then he keeps his dosage the same. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, then he adjusts the dosage. So there's always going to be that baseline dose of exercise, and we adjust that dose up or down to elicit the response we're after. Now, when it comes to conditioning, because you call that strength and conditioning, my theory on conditioning is this. If you want to get conditioned for jujitsu, do you know what you do? You do jujitsu. You do jujitsu. And that is another part of the the protocol that has remained the same since the beginning. And that's because there's no such thing as sports-specific exercise. The only thing specific to your sport is your, your sport. sport. And so if you want to be a better jiu-jitsu competitor, you know what you do? You compete in jiu-jitsu. All this stuff I've just said for years, and it just makes sense. So I'll give you, I'll give you the reason why that's important. There are three different types of transfer, okay? And this is a study Be that- Before we go to- um, Don't let me forget to say this. Thing. Yeah. What's up, guys? Josh McKinney here sitting down with my dad, Steve. And we are just talking about something exciting. We run simplifyingjujitsu.com together, and we have- really the biggest product we've ever put together, the most work we've ever put into yes, a product. Work. And it is called Efficient BJJ Strength in 15 Minutes. Yeah, I wanted to call it uh, Train Muscles and Save Joints, but I like yours better. I think that that is one of the biggest benefits is the fact that you do save your joints and you don't hurt your muscles. But I think one of the biggest selling points is that it's 15 minutes a week, maybe, maybe twice a week. 
and, but you get stronger. And that is the number one idea behind what we do. And then what we do is we put things in a simplified, logical, uh, common sense order um, so that you can kind of see how to enhance your training and keep yourself um, from hurting yourself outside of the gym because jujitsu is hard enough on your body. There is so much injury risk in jujitsu. Why in the heck would we have injury risk in our training? Absolutely. And so to me right now, it makes a lot of sense already. But if someone were to purchase it in this month, what's really exciting is we have this thing going called Steve's Bundle. We're also going to throw in for half off how to train jujitsu and 60, what is it? Train until 60 and beyond 60 moves that work into your 60s. Wait, wait. Say that again, Josh. What do they get? But wait, there's <laughs> more. If you, for 50% off, you can get How to Train Jiu-Jitsu, which is a Steve and Josh McKinney product, and 60 moves that work when you're 60, which I was watching back recently. We have a long-haired Bryce Allen getting neon bellied. That was when I made the post about him dying and us reviving him, <laughs> and his mom was calling. She actually thought, thought we he killed died. him. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. Great, great thing, but great product, too. Yes, uh, it'll I, I, it'll be helpful. It really does help people, and it'll give it'll allow them to think differently. It is different than anything that anyone has out there. And so the only way to get it is to go to simplifyingjujitsu.com. You can go to simplifyingjujitsu.com slash fifteen. That will take you to a page that gives you a little more information, gives you some thumbnail or, or gives you some uh, um, interviews with different athletes that have benefited, uh, and just a lot more information on the product itself. And you guys can check that out at simplifyingjujitsu.com. Hey, go ahead. Before we get into that, there were a few things. Um, that I just wanted you to reiterate because you said them. They're really important, though. Um, you said what we are looking for with with exercise, what we are trying to get out of exercise. I don't think that this is something as simple as this sounds to the extent like when you explain that the goal of jujitsu is control and you simplify what control is, people, black belts will say to me, why did I never know that? And the same with with strength training that the goal of strength training is to get stronger. And I don't, it's, it's as bizarre as that sounds, it's almost like people don't recognize that. Mm. They look at the goal as how they feel. I felt tired and sore. I feel really exhausted. These workouts are very hard for me to do. And, you know, and like, well, I'm going to keep doing them and I'm going to do them every day. And these workouts are really hard. And then they, same thing as always, they fall off. It's, it's the difference between um, proper exercise and I, I'll put it like this. It's the difference between intellectual exercise and emotional exercise. Intellectual exercise says I go in with a specific goal for a specific reason and I do it a specific way. Emotional exercise is I just want to tire myself out. I, I know that'll work, uh -huh. but it doesn't necessarily do that because all it does is tires you out mm -hmm. and so man there are so many protocols that people do and you know you're like oh i'm going to train for explosiveness and you know different things like that well explosiveness um if you think about like a wrestling shot let's say you have a good wrestling shot you're nine years old okay um i want to make it more explosive well at 10 years old it's going to be more explosive why because you got bigger and stronger it's the same principle of strength training. So um, you don't train like, I don't train fast to make people fast. That doesn't make any, you, you, you're not going to be as fast as you train. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It doesn't have any real direct correlation there. But if I get so much stronger and they continue to shoot a wrestling shot, guess what? They're going to be stronger in that wrestling yeah, shot. Yeah, explosiveness is intentional. It's an intentional factor that's based on your neurological ability to shoot a shot. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also based on you adding a little bit of strength to that and that shot will get better and more powerful and you'll just, and then you add the technique to that. So it goes back to the conditioning factor. You go back to, you're getting stronger, but you're training jujitsu. You're going to, all things given the stronger athlete is probably if they're the same, if all things are the same, Strength really does matter. Mm -hmm. It just really makes a difference, and you have something to say. Yeah, just even understand that the stronger athlete 
will even have better cardio, even if cardio is the same. That is 100% correct. Right? And it's like, if I roll with somebody that you have 30 or 40 pounds on, you will feel this in action because if it's your close to in skill level, you will say, wow, things feel close, but that guy's using 100% of his strength to deal with you. And you're probably using 70 or 80. And then that keeps going. Who can use, can you go at a hundred percent longer? Can you sprint at a hundred percent longer? Can't sprint miles. You can't. Or could you go at 70% of your speed longer. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to do longer for 70%. Think of, think of it in terms of weight training, okay? Let's say that you will just call a bench press. Say you bench press 100 pounds, okay? Then you take 80% of that. You take 80 pounds and see how many reps you can do, mm-hmm. all right? Then I get you to um, 120 pounds in your strength. Now, I don't suggest testing one of rep, course. but I'm just uh-huh. making a point. And then I take 80% of that and you do reps with that 80% of 120 pounds, your muscular endurance is better because it got you stronger. That makes sense. So that's, you know, when you look at these things and you think about them, um, you you just really have to remember. So let me go back to transfer Uh because when I talk about, and I'm not trying to knock anything or, or, you know, I'm just, I just observe stuff and I'm like, okay, how can you take the average athlete and how can you make the day-to-day athlete, the jujitsu uh, person who is a competitor, yeah. um, still wants to compete, but has to still Which make a living. Which is the average guy trying to be an average athlete most of the time. Yeah, we're just know? trying to get better. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, so what I do is I make them train jujitsu, and here's why. Um, and I don't have the quote in my head or the guy who did the study, but there was a study, and it was done years ago. It was on transfer. And there's three different kinds of transfer. There is positive transfer, there's negative transfer, there's indifferent transfer. Okay, so positive transfer is when you train your sport, you're going to get better at your sport. That transfers to your sport because it's positive. It's the very same thing. Negative transfer is when you train something similar to your sport. Um but it doesn't. It makes you worse at your sport rather than better. I'll give you a few examples of this. When I played slow pitch softball, I did that for a living for years. And I remember we were at a tr- we were playing in Cincinnati or a tournament in Cincinnati. And a couple of the guys, like three or four guys from the team, they would always go golfing um, during. And we had a game. Like they went in the morning with a game in the afternoon. And I'm like, I was you know wanting to win. You know, I'm like, why are you guys going golfing? I go. That is. I didn't know why. But I knew that when they went golfing, they did not hit as well. Yeah. Because the swing, although it's a swing, is not specific. Yeah. It's indifferent. That indifferent transfer, you know, cost you not to be as good. Another example. Let's say one of the super secret tricks in the bull matador thing. The night before the bull and the matador goes out, what they do is they shape a quarter inch off the horns of the bull. And the bull knows where those where his horns are, but he will miss the next day by a quarter inch. Mm-hmm. Um, let me give you another uh, another way to look at this. Save you a little money in the future. All right. So you're taking your wife to Six Flags, and they got the basketball hoop up there, and you're like, "Oh, I'm a basketball hooper, right?" Mm-hmm. Um, I just watched the N one special on Netflix, oh, and yeah. I did that last night, which is absolutely really fun to watch. But anyway, uh, the professor, remember the professor? I remember. Was, I was ju- I was thinking, who is that white it was guy? The professor, man. The professor. So anyway, you take the professor and you say, "Professor, we're going to take you to Six Flags. You got to win this prize because you're going to get married here soon. You want to get this for your fiance." Yeah. Here's and what all they, she wants for her wedding day is a big stuffed animal. Yeah, that's worth about a buck. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So so what they'll do to you is this. There's a guy behind the counter, and he s- takes the ball. Now, he's been working at Six Flags for 27 years, and he practices 27,000 times a day because he's selling something, so he shoots and he can hit the bucket. Yeah. So then he hands you the ball. You shoot, and you're about you're about a foot short of the basket. Now, here's why. What they do is they'll do one of two things. They'll either move it to 11 feet. The standard is 10. They'll move it to 11 feet or they'll move it to 9 feet. And then they will lower, they will make the rim one inch smaller. So now you're thinking, oh, I'm good. I've been shooting at a standard basketball uh, hoop for years at 10 feet. And then I go to shoot and I'm like, and you miss. Now, 
Think of, I want you to think of this though, and we're talking about indifferent transfer. For most people, it's going to mess them up. Of course, there are high level athletes that can adapt on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of how it works. There's a product out by a, a high level jujitsu guy, and it was on athleticism. This is how you be athletic. I'm like, bro, no. You, you were athletic before yeah. you put the product out. You didn't that that didn't happen like that. It's what came first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah. So the indifferent transfer is to try to train in a way that you think is going to help your sport. That's not your sport, and for the most part, it never works. Um, I'm sorry, that's negative transfer. Negative. Yeah. Now indifferent transfer is what we do, and strength training is indifferent, but it's still a benefit. Mm -hmm. So if I make sense, I could apply, I could apply my strength to moving at my house. I can apply my strength to moving another human in jujitsu because I built general strength (laughs) and it's indifferent. And in one of the segments that we do, I talk about tracking that could have been in the seminar, may have do, do them in both. But what we do is we track muscular and joint function and you train your muscles in that particular fashion a trained muscle is a trained muscle no matter if it's a five-year-old or a 95 year old so what we do is make sure that your joints line up when you do things and you want to make sure that you do it in a safe fashion because another thing that we're doing in the middle of what what we do for efficient bjj training is we are training you to reduce the possibility of injury. Does that mean you'll never get injured? Of course not. You're going to get injured. It's a, it's a rough sport. Yeah. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to add the potential for injury for that classic example. What we do is we muscular load in a slow, controlled fashion with very intentional turnarounds and fatigue the muscle deeply, what's called inroading. Okay, But we do that in a safe fashion. Compare that with a box jump. A box jump is going to train your muscles, but it's also going to affect your joints. Mm -hmm. When you go to that box jump, you use a lot of energy to explode off of the bottom of the box jump. But when you land, you're actually landing and it's your, your joints are what produce are what takes the strain of the force. Yeah. In jujitsu, you're having enough force. Why would I micro trauma my joints in any fashion? Because the micro trauma adds up over time. It doesn't just happen in one particular time. It adds up over time. So I want to avoid that possibility. Mm -hmm. And to me, the simplest case study of all this, can you guys prove it? Google, on go on YouTube, look up Josh McKinney. Anything 2019, 2020, anything... 21 even, but then you start getting to 22 and 23, completely different person athletically. And I didn't do box jumps. I didn't do anything crazy. Did some really simple stuff. We lifted once a week consistently. And there was this period of being injured where I kind of fell off being consistent. And I would still lift, but I would lift for three or four weeks and then I would come fall off. But I just really got consistent and I lost weight. I got to a point too where I trained less jujitsu, but I trained it harder because that seemed to be the problem. There was this really interesting thing because you kind of hinted at it a little bit. There is a level, you know, we're talking about gaining strength, but then you also have to think about for athletes specific. That's why we focus on skills, right? Hypothetically speaking, not that this would be the right thing for you to be a good basketball player, but hypothetically speaking, somebody who is used to playing on rims of different height would develop a skill to be able to shoot on rims of different height, right? If the guy that shoots on this 11 and this nine foot 27,000 times, if he goes to the YMCA and plays on the 10 foot two, I'd argue that he would develop a skill to be able to shoot on some, at least with some variation, right? And so um, in jujitsu, there is a skill that is not talked about or thought about, and especially when it comes to competition. And Andrew Wiltsey blew my mind with it. And he just explained it really simply. And he goes, yeah, people don't know what 100% is. He goes, nobody knows what 100% is. And I, 
that was a strong statement. What do you mean by that? And he goes, if I told you to do a rear naked choke on this bag, this, um, you know, this punching bag, and he goes, and I said, give me 100%, squeeze it at 100%. And then I looked at you and I said, get your elbow one inch deeper, you would squeeze it one inch deeper. And he goes, you weren't at 100%. Mm-hmm. He's like, and most everybody that you test with this don't even know what 100% is. And I look at like, the you know, facts that we talk about the skill of fatiguing muscles to true muscular failure, and it's in a controlled a environment, right? It's not in the environment of you're in a live round. Can you fatigue yourself to muscular failure? It's probably not a good idea because you're in a live round, right? You could get hurt at complete muscular failure. You don't know what that is. But now I have a complete mental and physical picture of what muscular failure is. And I lately am in the last three minutes of a match where I used to struggle um, in these 10 minute matches uh, because I was fat and out of shape. And I used to struggle, but one big thing is I'm still just as tired. I'm still feeling the same things and thinking the same things. But I also go to, I can't say, like you said, you don't know what's the difference. It's pretty indifferent between zero and a hundred. I'll be in my mind at 20. And I'll go, well, I, I know it's not zero and just keep going. Right. And then I'll be like, ah, maybe now I'm at 20. I don't know. I know it's not zero. Cause I know what zero actually is. And so I can just, while in that total muscular burn that you get in a jujitsu tournament, um, you know, I've developed a little more as weird as it is the skill of, of being able to go 100% and and know what that is. Um, But yeah, I just think that there is a level of skill development to this training. That's so true. That's what I want to speak into. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So it's this is a learned... I'm going to kill that guy. (laughs) I flicked him. Yeah, he just flicked him. Did you get that on? Did you you have my camera on? Guys listening to the audio, there is a fly tormenting us this whole episode, and I straight flicked him right in the eyeballs, and he just... (laughs) Aided. He's 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 drinking some more revival upshot, coffee, bro. Upshot, by upshot. Go ahead. Go so ahead. okay, so what we're doing with the way that we train people, it's a skill. You have to learn it, and you go back because this is the evolution of this training process. When we started back then, when you said, "Hey, we're training people with this squad," you're looking at kind of like there's some things that there was written early on a total tonnage and how much you're doing. Um, you know, you do these exercises, and each one is. To muscular failure, I don't even think we were training to. Pro- I, I don't think we we're training to pop proper muscular failure. Then now, we have you learn. This is a skill to train your muscle. And this, I'm going to explain the muscle fiber types real quick. There's four different types: type one, type two A, type two AB, type two B. I think they are the slow oxidative, fast oxi- uh, oxidative, uh, slow uh, or fast twitch glyco- uh, glycolytic. Um, and then um, fast twitch oxidative in there. Anyway, they what they do, we'll just talk, we'll say one, two, three, and four for simplicity's sake. I explained it in a little more detail. Um, but what they do- and, and that note, everything is explained in more detail. Way more detail. And intensity. directly, yeah, directly to the, the, the listener in, in this, uh, in the efficient yeah, just had, BJJ strength in 15 minutes. And, and I just had somebody give me feedback. It's like, that is so awesome. Now I learned how to, because we do all the exercises. Wasn't even a jujitsu athlete either. Yeah, and just show people how to mm-hmm. do the, um, how the exercise, uh, properly. Yep. And so, so what happens to your muscles is your muscles are recruited in sequential order. It's called sequential recruitment. So, Type one is low hanging fruit. You start an exercise, um, slow oxidative is what the what it's called, and that fatigues. Okay, then when that fatigues, as long as you're still under tension, you're still under the load. These first three that I'm going to talk about, they recover relatively quickly. The fourth one doesn't, and I'll explain. So you go type one, you're in your exercise in about, I don't know, 20 seconds in, type one, 10 seconds in, fatigues. So now you have the second type um, to take over. Mm-hmm. And um, and then what happens to that second type, um, it is it begins to fatigue. Then you have the third type take over. Okay, so now you have all three of those fatigued. 
the fourth one, fast twitch, uh, glycolytic, I think is or glycotic. I can't, I always mess up the pronunciation. That is the thickest muscle fiber type. And it has, you know, all these bundles. When you get the first three fatigued, you actually, that's when the fourth takes over. That is the last 20 seconds or so of the exercise. When the burn is so deep and you're getting that pulse modulation where your legs are shaking or your arms are shaking really bad, that um, is when that muscle fiber gets stimulated. It gets stimulated completely, a complete and total muscular failure. And then we continue to push for like five seconds and we've added a little bit to playing with 10 seconds, but we push it five seconds in a safe way to where you can't get any more out of the muscle. Now, here's the interesting thing. The first three muscle fiber types, they recover within minutes or hours. The last muscle fiber types takes four to seven days to recover. Hence, the reason that we only lift one to two days per week based on all the other factors that figure in. That that really makes a lot of sense to me. And again, it's just something that I've grown up in, but it also has tweaked and it has changed and it has become more of, of a way, a something you can do a little more by feel and a little less by. For instance, I've been doing two workouts a week. I didn't lift this week. I was super busy this week and it was just one of those like I haven't had taken a week off of lifting in a very long time and it was probably like hey might as well take a week off I feel so much better this week too so what we've learned too and what we played with for a while going up to a tournament up to a tournament you go Monday Thursday you only sprint on Monday you go Monday Thursday do all your training that's week one week two you go Monday Thursday um same principle. Week three, you go Monday. Mm-hmm. So it seems like that works the best. Yeah. And 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 I got that from a guy named Brian Johnson. He wrote a book called Blitz. And he said that um, you can you can do really well for 14 to 21 days and then you kind of overtrain. So that's why we do that. And you have to be able to understand when you begin to overtrain. So one of the things that this that we've done with um, I think that's been beneficial for our athletes is them not overtraining. You know how people get emotional and they overtrain before? Of course. I didn't do enough. I didn't do this. I need to train more. I need to run more. And I say, I need to do live rounds more, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Don't do that. Trust in your program. Trust in your jujitsu. Trust in your training and go from there. That is the biggest change that I've made that isn't lifting is taking more time off when I'm trying to perform. There is a difference. You don't need to be taking time off all the time. I write like jujitsu wise, I've been training almost every day, but I haven't been training very hard. Um, I would bet I know specifically there was a there was a round with Nick where I did get pretty close to a hundred percent and I was using explosiveness. I did have one match where I was pretty exhausted since Worlds. I had one um I had one nogi match and it was a 10 and a half minute match or something like that. Yeah, you're supposed um, to be exhausted. In those, bit. I was really tired. But besides those two instances in two and a half months, I have not went 100% in something that wasn't lifting, like in jujitsu, because I don't need to right now. Performance is different. And when I'm going truly 100% with high level black belt skill that is so fast paced against another high level black belt that is also has skill that is so fast paced and you're letting your strength run haywire, it's super dangerous. And so you can't, one, you can't access it all the time in training. It's just not, when you try to rely on it too much, you stop being able to access it. Um, And two, you know, whatever, you're just fatigued or whatever. Um, But two, I just noticed that like taking those times off and being, it just the way I would explain the feeling is ready to sprint, like being ready to go. I think I could, there's this, there's this part in the first born movie. And he says, how come I know that I could run a quarter mile in this weather in this altitude before my hands start to shake. And I'm like, that's how you should feel right before you're about to compete mm, is like how that. do I know I can run this sprint forever? Yeah. You know, and it, and it really is, it's just this feeling that you have of like, 
I'm recovered. I can explode now. Super important. Most people are overtrained most of the time and then they just keep grinding because everyone else is doing and doing these bike sprints and all this kind of stuff. And it, I mean, it's okay, I guess, but man, make your, your you, you don't want to be the best at exercise. Mm -hmm. It doesn't be, make sense if it sacrifices your performance. Yeah. And you want to be the best at jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've seen people who train in different ways, but um, I, I also have seen that this works for our, our guys. They're not getting tired. They're strong and it, and it works and it's really cool. And that's why what you just said is it's why you have off seasons in sports because mm -hmm. you can't go year round at 110%. Mm -hmm. you, know? you just can't. And yeah. people, people don't get that. It's like, so you have to learn to develop your skills separately than your performance. And then you have to learn to develop your performance separately than your skills because they're two different they're things. Two you want to marry them, but they're yeah. two different things. Yeah. And so, yeah, and I don't think that people get that. Bryce, what's our time at? Um, 15 All right. So I kind of wanted to go towards, well, definitely, I, you know, we're going to be on vacation. If we even get a chance to sneak a conversation in when we were on vacation, I have some mics for us if we decide Perfect. to. We'll do it in the car, in the car ride and just chat the whole time when we're, no, when we're going car from, ride. from the airport to- I thought we were flying. <laughs> From the airport to uh, Alabama. Maybe we'll do it at that time. Remember that? We have that trip. Maybe we won't. Whatever you say. <laughs> Whatever you say. Might All be. I know is I needed to get efficient B strength for BJJ and 15 minutes done before we left. That was all I know. So I don't know where we're going. We still do I that. know we're doing some jujitsu. And remind me of this too. Remind me to add that um, schedule that I just made up to the PDF. I forgot to do that. Oh, okay. Because that's um, important. Yep. You know, and we have every exercise explained how to track your muscle function and your joint function and how to do it safely. So all that stuff. It's it's. It, but here's the other thing too. Um, this is a product that you actually have to think about. It, this is a teaching product. This is something. And people are going to like, okay, so your last workout, Josh, seven minutes, six and a half. I just put it, I just uploaded it to the, um, to the workout section of, of the product. And you think, oh man, people think, oh, you can't, you know, do anything in that time. Um, but think about a five minute jujitsu match, yeah. you know, for me, that wears me out. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But man, if you do one exercise properly under load for 90 seconds, your heart it it your heart rate is through the roof your muscles are burning you're breathing um and you know like richie's last workout um was brutal mm -hmm. you know and so i asked him two days later he go hey how'd you feel after that workout and he goes i'm still feeling it. it was probably a little bit too much but we were just kind of he wanted to explore some um, um uh, intensity techniques. and it's off season it's off know? season and we can focus on those things a little bit more in off season because again we're not sacrificing performance. So you can change your volume a little bit. We never more than 15 minutes, but still oh, it's different. 12 minutes is different than six. Yeah, I'm going to go next know? door and train the group today. I'm going to train with them today. Though I'm going to hit a workout in. Yeah. And um, kind of just go through it with everyone today. I think though that before we kind of get away from everything, I think a good place to note, and I think that this is, and you can... Uh, I know you try to be less controversial than me. Um, so you can just nod your head if you don't want to verbalize it. But this is something that people don't understand when it comes to th this idea is crazy. Everyone knows that you need strength training for jujitsu to do it for a long period of time or that it's a huge benefit, right? Everybody or a lot of people recognize that. Um, even if you're not being an athlete, just to be a hobbyist, it's better for you to be stronger in the situation. But most people have bought workout products and mm -hmm. they cannot stick with it. And it is simply because they have a full-time job. They're trying to train an athletic sport already. And now you have to, now you have a second full-time job of lifting weights and something, and this is what people do not get. And this is not a generalization of everybody, but just a lot of people or a, a good amount of people. They can lift because they are super athletes. They are not super athletes because of the way that they lift. And what I mean by that, and that's not, whoa, whoa, oh, that sounds like a cop out. No, 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 no. There are guys that I grapple and I'll go compete. And we will, they're super athlete and they will beat stuff that I have 
with super athleticism. And nobody even looks at the guy and goes, hey, how do you do that? Because we all recognize that he can only do that because physically he operates in a different realm than we do, right? So we, a lot of times, and it's probably wrong to even do it to people that we do it to, but a lot of times we will go, nah, we're going to discount this because you can only get away with doing this because you're a super athlete. But we it's, called, it's called neurological efficiency. And what that means is there are some athletes, some people who can recruit more muscle fiber bundles and they're stronger. Mm-hmm. It goes back to the four muscle well, fiber. Types. And in jujitsu, there are a lot of people that could just recruit the fifth muscle fiber type, which you didn't talk about, which is testosterone. Yeah. Okay. And so I'll speak into both of the things. Just that, with just like, I, and that's kind of what I'm looking at though, yeah. is most of the time when you're comparing the other lifting regiments, those guys can only main the guys that can maintain it. A lot of them only can maintain it because of drug use. And it's, it, who cares if you do it? You can do whatever you want, but it is disingenuous for me to be throwing a natty guy, a product and say, lift like me and train like me, but we don't operate in the same world. Mm-hmm. We don't, we're two different. I am, I am a, a human A and you're a human B mm-hmm. and it is, and you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like, and so uh, the thing with that too, is if you take a person who is, you know, we'll call it enhanced, but you put them on this program too, there's going to be some benefit for them. Of course. Uh, now, now let me, let me go back to this though, because I think this is important for people who are on the fence on, you know, TRT is like a big thing. You go to the clinics and they're going to give it to you if you're nine. Yeah. Oh, you don't have enough, you know, that's just, a, it's a, you, you got to follow the money. I mean, that's really yeah. what it comes down to. But if you, if you think about how do you enhance your, uh, your T levels, okay? The first thing is you stop overtraining. That's the number one thing because most people overtrain. That's a fear-based thing. You, you know, you see other people doing it, so, oh, they're training twice. You know that mentality. Yeah, of course. And so, um, so overtraining will cause a lower level of testosterone. Also, not getting enough sleep. And so if you're not getting it, sleep is the most anabolic thing you can do. Yeah. That is where the magic happens. Now, as far as supplementation, um, you, so you want to, the other part is lifestyle, you know, reduce your stress levels, um, do what you can in the middle of that, eat right, um, trying to get enough sleep, try to um, um, have a daily routine. And as far as supplementation goes, add zinc. Zinc is going to be super helpful for T levels. There's a product uh, called ZMA. Yeah. Also, no, there's over the counter product a DHEA. It's kind of a pro hormone. That's another product people can use as well. Um, make sure you're eating enough high quality food. I think that's a big, big factor when it comes down to it. And then, um, like with the lifting factor, we're going to raise your your GH one levels. You're going to raise your testosterone training like this type of thing. Now, let me say something as a strength and like we call it a strength coach, whatever. I don't even want to put a title on what necessarily what I do, just mm-hmm. a trainer. I'm just trying to help people in the middle of it. I don't even take, like for your success, your success is for you, what you've done. Maybe I give you some guidelines to help you, but I don't take credit for your success because I don't take credit for anyone's success because they're the ones who deserve the credit. Of course. Um, and because I've been through this before, when you train people and if someone loses, they blame you. Of course. And it's like, no, that doesn't, they, they were better than you lost because they were better than you. That happens. Or you lost because you suck. And just, yeah. yeah. So that's a hint. I suck at jujitsu. So. Yes. But, but anyway, the point is, is that the way that we approach this is reduce the possibility of injury, increase the, uh, your strength levels, and then train jujitsu at, 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 if you want to get better at jujitsu. It's so simple. Um, it's, but it's a, a thought based approach. Stay focused on what you're doing. And when you and then you tweak based on how you're doing in the middle of that. And that's all we've done over the years with this with this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so. yeah, it's been a really fun journey. Let's share it with some people, and I think we can we can grow it more. Do you have anything you want to say to finish? Um, if like if people do get the um, when people get the product, that there's any questions that they have, um, they can ask. 
you know, we can even film more things if there's questions. And then, um, so I'm using, like, every time I go on a show, people say, well, what, you know, like, I'll go on a podcast, they'll say, uh, well, how can people contact you? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, send me a, a letter in the mail. I'm 60 plus, that's, yeah. you know, but I'm trying to, and I don't do this very well at all. But Steve Dot McKinney, is that my thing on Instagram? I have two. I have a fitness and more. I'll make sure to tag your gram. Okay, I'll, because um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to use the Steve Dot McKinney thing for this product because I don't want to confuse it with my personal yeah, training. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so so I'm trying because I'll I'll be like people will say, hey, I want you to be on my podcast, and I look at the thing, I'm like, oh, they sent this six months ago. Oh yeah, I don't even. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not good at doing that. I'm trying to get better at that, but I don't really care that much so. yeah yeah <laughs> so. you can you can hear us on here yeah you can exactly. hear from us on here send a question when we're scrambling seven minutes before the episode records for to do a q and a episode um yeah we'll answer that question then absolutely you know? all uh, right six years from now we'll yep. answer it okay. uh, but thank you for being on the show it's fun and that is the episode uh, thank you guys for listening to this one. I really, really, uh, these are my favorite episodes to do episodes with people that I'm close to people I've known forever where we can just, we really didn't even discuss what we were going to discuss on this episode. I had no notes. He had no notes. We can just talk, right? Because we know each other so well. And uh, I really love doing episodes like this. They're just a lot of fun for me. I'll make sure as we kind of run this sale that we get my dad on at least one more time. And, uh, you know, maybe if you guys had any questions from this, uh, anything that you heard on this episode that maybe you wish would have been explained more or anything like that, uh, you could send us those questions. You can send me the questions, josh at simplifyingjujitsu.com or just send me a message on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just let me know because then it would give us a little more context to talk about later in the month when I have my dad on again. And so... Uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys check out the new course. There's a lot more information on it. There's some testimonials on it. It's simplifyingjujitsu.com. And most importantly, I hope that today's episode helps you guys suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. Have a great day, guys. <laughs>